Uh, thank you for joining me for another episode of this podcast. My name is Yahya, and joining with me are two guests this time. First, we have Benny, who is currently interning at CIBC's Capital Markets as a summer analyst. Second, we have Peter, who has interned at National Bank this winter as an investment banking analyst. I know both of your schedules must be really, really packed, so I really do appreciate both of your time today. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's great to be here. I know both of you completed your third years, I believe. What did you like or dislike after Benny finishes? Peter, you can add on after. Yeah, for sure. So I think uh, I think for me, what I really liked about third year was the openness. Um, as you know, with the BBA program, in the first and second years, you guys have like a lot of kind of set courses um, that you have to go through. And so that's stuff like accounting, finance, like you go through all the motions and, and all the different kind of different streams of business. Um, so what I like that in third year is that it opens up and you can kind of pick more of the courses that you enjoy. Uh, so for me, that was things like potentially finance and whatnot. Um, I got to explore a little bit of different interests in various other uh, areas. So for example, I took a business case analysis a course, which taught me a lot about presentation skills and whatnot, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, Peter, you got anything else? Yeah, so I would echo like a lot of those points. Like, I like the fact that like in third year, you you actually get to take courses that you actually enjoy. So like I got to, so I would say like, the majority of my favorite course at show like, were like the ones that I took in third year because like it was able to like really hone down on my interests whether it be like taking business law or like taking personal finance I found like these courses were, in, were incredibly interesting and stuff that like I really enjoyed like uh, like going to class like every single time um but I would also say that like you have a lot more flexibility so during this winter I was able to take the entire semester off and do like an internship and then that's something that you can't really do during your first or second year so I would definitely echo Benny and saying like I like the flexibility of like being third, third being in third and fourth year and now moving on to Peter for this question um out of the three years you've done at Shulik so far what has been your favorite year and then Benny can add on after hmm that's kind of a, a tough question because like each one of my years had like different highlight to it um for me like I would probably say that my third year was probably my favorite year for because like I got to take a lot of the courses I really enjoyed and I actually got to like pick things that personally interested me and the other side of it was like during my third year I got to complete my first ever capital markets internship and for me like I've had an amazing experience and to be able to have both of these factors like that's what made my third year really really special I think for me, I'd say that my like second year was probably the the highlight of my Schulich experience. And I think the 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 portion of second year that I liked the most was kind of that little uh like it, for us we had a a section of it where we actually got to go in person. Um, so that was like I think it was like February of like second year up until April. So that was like probably the most chunk of fun that I've ever had. Mainly because it was kind of the first time we ever got to go back in person after like two years of online school and so we were just so glad to be back in person I was able to see all the friends that I had met virtually and like we went out all the time so that was honestly like a lot of fun um, in in addition to all the different clubs and things that we were learning I think that being able to be in person with my friends and and meet people kind of face to face for the first time in, in two years was a really great experience what do you like about Schulich and what don't you like about Schulich for me like my favorite thing about Schulich was the culture like for me like I always felt like I was a part of a community that kind of like built you up rather than tore you down. Like even within like within like something like finance recruitment, which is known to be like really, really competitive. Like I never, ever felt like someone was trying to like, you know, plot like my downfall. And I always felt like they were always willing to be there to like help support me throughout that journey. And I feel as though that's something really unique about Shulik. Um, I feel as though having like a really small like class size you're able to like build and foster those like really tight connections that I don't think you'll be able to get at any other business school and as for like something perhaps like I didn't like love about Shulik was like I feel as though like some other schools do have like some better connections especially in areas such as finance and consulting but for me like I ultimately decide I want to come to Shulik for the culture and for that community and I and if I was to do it again I would probably like still make the same decision for me, definitely, I, I definitely echo what Peter's saying about the community. I think at Shulik, there's a really great, like, community of people that, like, are here, they're open-minded, and they're always willing to lend a hand, which is something that I always love about Shulik, and I try to kind of do the same for others as well. Um, in terms of other things that I like, I like the small class sizes. Um, it really gives you a chance to meet your professors in a more, more kind of personal level and connect with them, which allows them to kind of know your name and know how you learn and who you are. 
I think that provides an immense value because then when it comes to actually like working with the professor or trying to learn or going to office hours, it becomes a lot more personable to your own learning. And I think that's how I learn best is kind of by talking to people and, and chatting with them. So that was really helpful. In terms of things that maybe not so great, I would say that for me, I think our policy around three hour lectures is something that really is, is, is pretty tough sometimes. Uh, I know other schools don't always do three hour lectures. And so that's one way that I wish we could maybe move towards. I know for a fact that when we were in online school, like we had like two hour lectures and or a one and a half hour lectures. And honestly, like I felt like I learned a lot in those lectures. I feel like sometimes uh, things are dragged out when it comes to three hours. And honestly, if we just did two straight hours of lectures and then called it, I would be a lot, happy, a lot happier with that because we were able to do it once. And I think we'd be able to do what was the biggest jump from high school to university that you faced and how did you feel like you overcome it? Yeah, I think it's definitely kind of shifting into the, for lack of a better word, we're going to say like business school mindset, the sense that like you should be thinking about the future and like, yes, business school, like the courses might not be necessarily difficult um, as opposed to potentially other programs. Um, but there are other aspects that you have to think about. So you need to learn how to balance like recruiting for jobs you need to balance you know managing your time with clubs with school with friends i think that was a huge jump because in high school things came pretty easily um you just go to class you know you hang with your friends after school and, and that was it but once you jump into university and, and business school in general you're kind of now a little bit more into the real world and you're thinking you know like how can i best position myself to get that job when i graduate how can i position myself to be well set up so that like when I come out into the real world, I'm not like looking for a job, but in the sense that I already have a job. And I think that that kind of pressure being on you all the time is something you learn to live with over time. Um, and obviously it's not going to take up like your capacity all the time, but it's definitely there. And I feel that when we were in high school, you know, things were a lot more lax. You didn't have much pressure except for deciding what it is you want to study in university. But once you're in university, it transitions to become what it is that you want to do with your life. And I think that that is something that was a big jump and it definitely took a toll on me in kind of first and second year when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Uh, but now that I figured it out, it's a lot more bearable. I, I would say for me, like the one thing that was a little bit challenging to like get used to was like understanding the fact that you actually had to be like a well-rounded, like, like balanced student in order to succeed in business school. Like, like your GPA and just doing well in your academics, that's not enough to like be like an A tier like top tier student in business school you as Benny mentioned like you have to be like well-rounded you have to like be prepared to like get involved in clubs to be prepared to try and find experiences like outside the classroom and like I would say like that's the main thing that I had to adjust to that was like the learning curve for me like going from like um going from like high school going into like my first year like that was the one thing that I had to like kind of like pick up many people usually think finance is just investment banking is this true and if it isn't do you mind elaborating on other fields within finance that someone could pursue? So I'll, I would first say that although I did do an investment banking internship, investment banking isn't the only role in finance. There's a lot of different things that you could go into, whether it be other capital market roles, such as corporate banking, sales and trading, equity research, or even things outside of capital markets, such as wealth management, or even going into industry finance. There's there's a wide array of different opportunities. It's a very broad field. And investment banking isn't may, may not be a perfect match for everyone and that's perfectly fine and that's the reason why there's so many different opportunities that you could explore so my advice would be to like definitely try and network with people in these different like roles and to try and actually learn more about what like what you actually do in these types of fields yeah i definitely think that peter described it extremely well in terms of finance i think a lot of people get uh, i guess amazed by kind of the prestige and all the things that come with investment banking and investment banking is a great career. Don't get me wrong. But it's, like Peter said, it's not the only thing that's out there. For me personally, I'm in corporate banking. And uh, this is something that I chose to do because it's something that I enjoy. I like the lending side. I like the, the balance sheet aspect of the relationship management. And that's why I decided to go with corporate banking. But in, initially, I was thinking about investment banking. But after networking with people, um, chatting with them about their daily jobs and the kind of things that they do, I decided that corporate banking was the route for me. So definitely, I, I echo the sentiments that Peter said about Make sure you know exactly what you're getting into and make sure you know what job it is that you want to do. The way you can do that is by maybe interning in it or chatting with people is a great way to do it as well. Uh, but don't go into it blindly because if you go into a job just because you think you like it and not because you know you'll like it, uh, you're going to have a hard time succeeding.
a lot of people usually think tier two schools eliminate any possibility of landing any high finance careers within the U.S. Do you think that's really true in your opinion? Personally, I don't think that's true. Uh, I personally didn't recruit for the U.S. because I wanted to stay in Canada, but I know tons of friends who did recruit for the U.S. and landed positions there. Um, so I, I think that obviously the challenge will be greater um, coming from a tier two school. We don't have as many connections compared to the tier one schools, um, and they might not favor us as much in terms of uh, preference uh, of schools that they're hiring from, but it's definitely not impossible. And uh, I, I've got a lot of friends who have done that and they've gone through the motions and they're very smart people. And so I would think that as long as you put in the work and you take your time to foster genuine relationships with those people at these kind of companies, um, you'd be able to get anywhere you want as long as you have the necessary skills, you have the necessary relationships and everything kind of lines up for you in that aspect. I would like to echo like a lot of the points that Benny mentioned. And like the one thing I would add on to that is like, just because you're not able to like go for like um like a big name like New York investment banking job right out of your undergrad doesn't mean that you'll never ever get there. Like I know so many people that have like lateraled into investment banking from like a lot of other um different like different areas or different industries such as accounting or even like working in industry. And I would say that if you really want to go for that position, like nothing's stopping you. And it, and as long as like you never give up, you you probably would get to where you want to be eventually. What do you feel like Shulik lacks then if that doesn't make it a target school for those trying to get into the States? I think the main thing is it ha has been um, we don't have as many alumni as, say, like other schools. Um, and part this is for like a, a couple of reasons. Traditionally, Shulik has been pretty heavy on like the accounting side. We've sent a lot of people um, to get their CPA designations working in Big Four. So just a little bit of a legacy effect. Um, we don't have as many like capital markets alumni as say like those schools. And the other side of it was, is also um, because of our smaller class sizes, although it can be an advantage like when you're here, um, it just naturally restricts down the number of um, alumni in the field compared to like bigger programs. But I would still say that if you do want to go for that type of role, like it's definitely possible. Just make sure you, you're constantly putting in persistent effort and make sure that you never give up. And as long as you could do that, like it's not like a deal breaker. What are some big misconceptions people have when it comes to finance? I'd say that like one of the big misconceptions about finance is um, that like everyone's kind of like a technical hardo and like they do nothing but like, you know, bury their heads in, in like Excel spreadsheets and just crunch out PowerPoint slides all day. Like that definitely is like an aspect of the job. But I, I would say like one thing that I think a lot of people like kind of glance over, glance over is that it's really like a relationship business and like it's really important to be able to present yourself as someone that's actually likable and that you could actually work with till like 1am in, in the morning um and like the way that kind of plays out like actually on the job is like a lot of times like these people like are, are a lot a lot of times like way nicer than you would ever imagine like sure they kind of seem intimidating on like linkedin being like oh yeah investment banking analyst or investment banking associate but it's like when you actually get to meet them they're just people at the end of the day and like i think like that's one misconception is like is like people kind of view like finance as kind of like a mean industry like everyone that i met at national has been incredibly nice and like that was something that that was almost a pleasant surprise for me yeah, I think Peter really hit the bullseye here. In terms of uh, like the finance industry, I think people get caught up on kind of the external or like the outer shell of finance, which people always see, like you know, like the modeling, the, the the PowerPoint, all those kind of like technical skills. They never really peel back the onion to see exactly what it is that people are like inside. Um, like like Peter said, like the people I've met on my floor, like they all have lives outside of their jobs. They're all people at the end of the day, and they all have interests and things that they talk about and joke around. Like it's not just always about finance and whatnot and uh, and i like that a lot i know a lot of people within shulik want to break into finance and it's becoming a bigger portion of people who are graduating who want to land finance so what advice do you have them for increasing their chances of getting a finance related internship and you guys can plug in uh, yfc or yusuf if you want yeah definitely i think i'm going to do just that i think from like a holistic top-down view in terms of finance recruitment it's something that's definitely accelerating um so compared to like a traditional like internship in a potentially like another field, you're going to be scaling the mountain a lot faster and a lot earlier than you might expect to. So for example, uh, for, for, for reference, when I received my offer for my summer analyst role, that was in July of 2022. I recently had a peer of mine who uh, received the same offer for the same position, but that was in March of this year. 
So you can see that they're starting to recruit a lot earlier. So one thing I would say is definitely don't wait um, to see if you're interested in finance. If you think you might have even the smidge, like a smidge of interest in the field, go out, chat with people, um, talk to people about their jobs and see if you can, uh, you know, intern at a, like a smaller finance firm or something, but find out for sure if finance is where you want to be. Because if you do, then you can start to work towards getting the position that you want. I think that if you wait too long, you're going to regret not having taken the chance to potentially experience a finance or capital markets internship. And one of the ways that helps you discover if you like it or not is by joining clubs and, and, and organizations such as YFC, such as USIF. Um, actually, I think they're some of the best resources when it comes to um, trying to learn more about finance and capital markets. You know, we bring people together. Uh, we bring in reps for you guys to uh, meet and network with and host workshops and things to help you learn the skills. I think that these are invaluable and they're going to allow you to get up the learning curve a lot faster than your peers and prepare you well for finance and capital markets. Just to add on to that, I would say like if you do want to pursue a career in capital markets or in investment banking, definitely try and have like a compelling reason to do so because like I know like a lot of kids like kind of see like oh yeah like it pays well and the prestige and all that and I don't 100% believe that like that's like a good enough reason to wanting to pursue a career in capital markets because like there's other careers that like kind of pay well and that's also like prestigious and finance recruitment is a really really long journey like it often takes like years and months in order to like get to that end goal of being able to like land the internship and close out like a full-time position and if you don't have like a good reason to like pursue like this industry i think like it's kind of hard to like motivate yourself and like keep your foot on the pedal in order to like drive to that goal and i, I would say like you should really try and like understand the industry like understand like what an investment banker actually does and see if it's the right fit for you and when you're actually going about networking, actually try and build like meaningful, like real relationships, like ask things that you're actually interested in. And like, don't just go through like a laundry list of questions that like, you know, makes you kind of like a little bit generic in your coffee chat. I would say like, actually know what you're getting yourself into and build meaningful, meaningful relationships. I would say like, those are my main two pieces of advice. And in terms of uh, pushing some clubs, I would say like definitely Yusuf has been like a huge part in my like finance journey. I got to like meet a lot of like people that have been able to like help me throughout my journey and I was able to like really build out a lot of the skills that I found like both useful in recruitment and actually on the job so I would say like if you're interested in finance at Shulik like definitely join like YFC and Yusuf but definitely join Yusuf. <laughs> gotcha and I know you kind of elaborated on how important coffee chats and maintaining those connections are how does one let's say land those coffee chats but also maintain those relationships throughout the year? So I would say that when you're kind of like approaching networking um, you would mainly want to first start by like approaching out like Shuik alumni um, because like typically like these are the people that are like most willing to like help out like other Shuik students because you have that mutual connection um, typically like when I was in first year or second year like and I was doing networking I would typically try and find these people like on LinkedIn and uh, um, try and find like companies that um, I was interested in working at and finding out through these Shuik alumni to reach out to and usually uh, I would say for finance like the best way to do it is to like do it using email um, because like working in capital markets you're always on like um you're always on outlook you're always checking this is the one thing that you're always checking so it's pretty easy to like um spot it almost so it's like i would say like that's the structure to like finding out coffee chat fi finding like people to like go and coffee in terms of maintaining relations i would just say like make sure to just follow up every couple of months so like don't don't just go into a coffee chat talk to a person and never ever talk to them again because i feel as though that's not really an actionable relationship like you kind of need to like you know have a couple chats you know and actually have them know you and you know them I feel as though then that's when you actually are able to like you know make the request and say like hey um do you have any information about this process are you willing to potentially refer me that's when like you have an actionable relationship yeah I definitely agree with what Peter's saying here uh, I have a couple tips in reference to what he's saying in terms of maintaining that relationship um a lot of people ask her like oh you know like how how can I follow up with someone after a couple of months? Like, what do I talk about? I think one of the best ways to keep a relationship warm and, and chat with them with the meeting is to like update them after you've had like uh, something happen. Um, so let's say like you've joined a new club or you landed a new internship or something monumental in your career or your progression has happened. You want to update them? That works. Or if something has happened in their life, you could be like, hey, like I want to learn more about what you're doing now or how your promotion is, that kind of thing. That's a good way to kind of keep developing your relationships and keep on chatting with them over time. In terms of um, emailing, one word of caution is that 
definitely never go for their personal emails. That's a pretty big no, no. Um, so you definitely want to be shooting for their, uh, work emails and just email them in there. Um, Cause that's a lot more professional and a lot more accepted. And lastly, when you're trying to foster these relationships, don't, don't do it in a way where you're aiming to get a job because people can smell that from a mile away. They'll know if you're just trying to use them to, to get to a position um, aim more to genuinely learn who they are, meet them and form a real relationship with them as a person. And that will take you a lot further than a transactional relationship will, because people will know when you're emailing them like a month before applications drop that you're not looking to just chat to chat. You're looking to get a chat to, to get an internship. And I think in almost every chance, they're going to pick the person who's been chatting with them. Um, over time, much more than the person that just reached out. Um, so those are a couple of tips that I have. For my next question, Benny, you could answer this first. Peter can add on after. I know in finance and I guess in Shulik in general, there's a lot of FOMO on LinkedIn or just in general among your peers that someone's doing better than you are and you kind of feel like you're behind. So imposter syndrome kinks in too. How do you feel like you've overcome that if you've experienced that before? Personally, I don't see it that way. And this might just be my mindset, but the way I see it is like, oh, like, oh, my friends landed this job. I would use that as motivation to want to also get a job. So I think switching up your mindset is a way that you can kind of make this work for you. Um, obviously, like it, it's tough sometimes when, when like you see like all these other people have these things and, and you're potentially still in the process of trying to secure an internship. That can be tough. And I, I can sympathize with that for sure. But one way that kind of spun around is like, hey, like, why don't I just use this as motivation to be like, I got to work this much harder, um, seeing that my friends have this, like, like, I know I can also do that, right? So being able to leverage, like, your own core competencies um, to be able to put those towards getting in the process for getting into trip, whether it's, you know, doubling down on your networking or working more on your technical skills. Um, these are the kind of things that you can actively do all the time to be helping you to get these kind of internships. And I think also in terms of LinkedIn, it's kind of like another form of, no, not it. It is another form of social media. And I think um, a lot of people post on there to only show kind of like the good things that are happening, right? Like if you get a new job, obviously you would post about that, but, but you wouldn't post about the time that you're unemployed. That's very unlikely, right? So I think it's important to kind of know that, you know, everyone's life has adversity. Everyone's life is hard and not everyone is succeeding all the time. So being able to kind of see through that on LinkedIn and, and just seeing like, hey, like it's good that this person got this job, but I know that maybe like the past couple of months has been hard for them until they got the job, until they got this job. And so being able to see that in yourself and say like, hey, like I'm in the tough, like hard working period right now, but once I get that job, it's going to pay off a lot more. So that's what I think. Yeah, I think that was really well said. And just to add on to that, I would say like, you have to remember the fact that like, you're kind of like, on your own individual path and your individual story so it's never ever like a pure apples to apples comparison saying like oh yeah like i'm in second year I'm, like this other person's in second year and he got this job like you, you can't really compare yourself up against that because it's like you guys both have like different experiences different like different like you know factors that allowed you to like get to um where you're currently at and i would say like you know i wouldn't let that get to your head like knowing that in the back of your mind I would also say that, like, you, you have to remember that, like, the one thing that kills, like, your dreams to, like, get into capital markets or get into, like, any role is, like, like, just giving up. Like, because, like, there's always, like, a lot of different avenues and different opportunities to, like, get into capital markets. And this could be whether it be, like, an off-cycle internship or it, be, it could be going into industry and then lateraling in as, like, um, as, like, a se more senior hire. Like, there's a lot of different ways to, like, get there. And I would say that, if you ever let, let that get to your head, it's going to, if you ever let that comparison mindset, like kind of crush your dreams, that's, that's like almost like a deal breaker. Like when it comes to like finance recruitment, and it's like, I always knew that in the back of my mind. So it's like, I, I always remind myself to like, never let that phase me because of that reason. And like, I would say like, those are my two main points to like, you know, to, to like that type, 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 type of situation. I've seen a lot of first years on um, LinkedIn or just in general in finance take on unpaid full-time internships. So as someone who might not be into finance and is curious about why people do this, what are the, like the benefits of people getting, what are the benefits of basically an unpaid internship? So I could talk to this, like during my second year, I actually did a part-time unpaid internship with um, this Vancouver-based search fund. 
And for me, like personally, it was worth it because like I got a lot of connections out of it. I got a lot of things that I was able to talk to and in, like interviews and I was able to really hone out my skill set. Um, but I do know people that had like, you know, unfavorable experiences said that it was kind of like a waste of time. And my piece of advice with that is like, actually get to know the people at like, you know, these unpaid internships, like, and see if there are people that you could actually work with, see if there are people that could actually help you achieve your goals. Because like, I feel like here more than ever, it's important to like network so that you could get a better understanding of like, whether or not it's going to be worth it and whether or not you should sign on for it. Um, I do know that, however, that like, you know, search funds have traditionally been like a pipeline for like capital markets. So um, in terms of like a potential option, if like, if you need like finance experience, like I think search funds um, or other unpaid internships can definitely be really helpful in like that journey. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree with what Peter said. Personally, I'm not a fan of unpaid internships. I think that the free labor just hurts a little. I personally, like, I, I, I just feel bad. Like, I think, like, if you're putting in all this time, like, you should be rewarded for your work outside of just experiencing connections because you can get that at a paid internship as well. Uh, but I obviously, like, there are stories like Peter's where, where, like, this kind of connections leads into a much greater thing down the road, uh, which I think is definitely valid. So for me personally, I, I'm not a fan of unpaid internships, I think that everyone should be compensated for what they do. And as a student, definitely like you're living the student life, right? Like being a student isn't 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 cheap. You know, you have tuition bills to pay, or you know, food and rent and whatnot. And so I think that if you're going to be spending your time in an internship, uh, putting in those hours, like you should be compensated for your work. Uh, but I'm also cognizant that people have different views. Um, so overall, I think that it kind of depends on who you ask. For me personally, I think that internships should be paid and i would hope that we can move to that model in the future so everyone can kind of get compensated for the work that they do and i think that people also might work better when they are compensated for what they do i think what clubs kind of do is like it almost kind of they, they almost kind of like take some of the work that you would have had to do to like network or to meet people like off your shoulders and they kind of like you know shoulder that burden and um give you access to those types of connections like, like i know like yfc and like a lot of other clubs like they host like networking events they host like case competitions where you're able to like meet a lot of people um you're able to like kind of like prove out your skill set and you're able to like pull out like a lot of like great experiences and i feel as though like for that reason it's it it, it almost allows you like a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't have had otherwise and that's what kind of justifies like you know the 20 dollar fee or whatnot I think like, especially in like your first year club, joining clubs, joining a lot of clubs, it's almost kind of like low hanging fruit, like whether it be like joining SPP as like a mentee in order to like, in order to like get the support of like an upper year mentor or being able to like, you know, start building like your initial foundation of like networking contacts. Like I feel as though that's when it's especially useful. So like for any first year that's listening, like I know it is kind of like painful to like, you know, have to shout out like 20 bucks to uh, Benny Lee on YFC over here, but like. It, it, I know it might be painful, but it is worth it. Like it is worth it because you're able to like meet a lot of people. You're able to broaden your skill set and broaden your experiences like outside the classroom. And I think it's though like looking back now, it's it was a no brainer, and like it was a no brainer for me to like sign up for everything. Yeah, Peter's really got it got it right here. Uh, I think that yes, the twenty dollars now might seem like a lot, but the kind of value, the opportunities that clubs give you um is far greater than that 20 bucks will ever do for you um for me personally like clubs are the main reason and yfc for example is the main reason why i'm into finance and i was able to get into finance today um there are numerous programs that literally allow you to get so much networking experience so much technical experience that like it, it's just it's a no-brainer to not take this kind of option for example yfc has multiple things such as the coffee connect program which allows you to literally be connected to people in your field and like they chat with you. There's also the researchers program, which provides you with the technical experience and the modeling experience that you need to be able to do these kind of jobs. Uh, furthermore, things like the alpha mentorship program provides you with um, a mentor who succeeded in doing a capital markets internship um, and are able to provide you with that support and that guidance that you need. And I think mentorship is a huge aspect when it comes to finance in general. Uh, I think without my mentors, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I think people have a really big paying it back culture here at Strulik. And so like I choose and Peter chooses to mentor students uh, like down the road as well so that we can push forward this idea of, you know, learning and growing together and allowing, you know, these students to, to learn what we learned when we were in their shoes and continue to push forward the concept of kind of finance recruitment at Strulik.
Yeah, those are both really good answers. Um, this is more out of my curiosity, to be honest. But when someone pays that twenty dollar membership fee, where is that money going? Yeah. So when it comes to like hosting events and stuff, that stuff is not free, and clubs need like money to be able to host those kind of things. So membership revenues uh, directly go into like funding our events and stuff. So like it's not like for profit. The clubs don't turn a profit. We use that money to use it for the members and put our events and put on the. Uh, conferences and whatnot and so without that membership money it becomes a lot harder um, to do these kind of events for our members i know most high schoolers really do care about co-op being a part of a program they choose do you feel like shulik not having co-op is something that is a disadvantage it's not necessarily a disadvantage uh, i think co-op can be useful at other schools I, it definitely allows you to have more flexibility uh, when it comes to doing like off cycle internships or co-op specific roles uh, but it's still definitely possible to succeed in finance and other roles here. Sure, like, like everyone here, uh, a lot of people here have like jobs and they have internships and whatnot that you kind of just find for yourself. And honestly, I find that because this is the way that it is, it, it allows you to develop those skills, those kind of job hunting and recruitment skills that you would need should you need to find a job in the future. You'll be trained in kind of the art of how to recruit and the various things that you have to do compared to a co-op program, which might just hold your hand kind of the whole way. And that's not going to teach you the things that you need to know. Like, let's say like you get calls, but then when you come out to the real world and you need to start applying for jobs and interviewing for them, like everyone else, it's going to be a bit more of a challenge if you haven't experienced that before. And furthermore, in terms of flexibility, Peter here is like a living example that you can still do like off cycle internships and still succeed and graduate on time. He did a whole investment banking thing in the winter and, but he's still slated to graduate on time and you can still take summer courses and whatnot and fast track your schedule. So I think like, there's not as much flexibility, but I wouldn't consider it a hindrance in many ways. Yeah, I think Benny really <laughs> kind of hit the nail on the head on like a lot of those points. Like, like j just because Shulik doesn't have like an official co-op program, like doesn't mean you can't go for like off cycle or co-op type internships. Like it's, it's I, I think like one misconception about Shulik is like, it's hard to be able to like do these off cycle internships and still graduate on time. In reality, all you really have to do is like do like three summer school credits and take like work placements um, across like, you know, two internships and that's five credits and you're able to graduate on time. And that's kind of what I did. Like I was able to, you know, do a little bit of summer school, do like um, work placement, like course credits in order to like make sure I'm still on track to graduate. And I was able to um, take an entire semester off in order to do like an investment banking internship. And I would say like, sure there's less hand holding but like the opportunities are still out there nothing's stopping you from like doing the doing those type of, type of experiences and as for like a last question if you were like to give like a summary or a tldr what advice do you have for upcoming first years um to do well at shulik there, there's a lot of advice i would give to like my first year self if i was to like you know re revisit them but like some general pieces of advice i would say is like don't be afraid to like get involved at shulik being a business student isn't just about like, you know, how you perform in the classroom and, you know, your academics and your GPA. It's being a well-rounded student. So don't be afraid to like get involved in clubs, find things that you're interested in and have a little bit of fun. And also like, don't be afraid to like, you know, apply for internships, try and find like experiences to like learn outside the classroom. I think like that's a big shift that you'll find like when you're coming to Shulik. And the other thing I would push is like, find mentors at Shulik that could help you, whether it be um, f joining like the Alpha Mentorship Program to find like a, a mentor in finance or joining SVP. I think that SVP is an amazing resource for like first years that are starting their Shulik journey. Like you get access to like a mentor who's been successful and that can help you through like a lot of different areas, whether it be your academics or helping you make friends or helping you like recruit for an internship for the first time. I think that it's a pretty easy way to like get almost like a jump start, like, um, during your time at Shulik. So I would highly say, like, highly recommend you, like, um, join SPP, um, find a mentor there, or find mentors throughout, like, the student body. I would say, like, those are my main two pieces of, of advice. I'm going to go ahead and say, I think Peter stole my main two pieces of advice. Um, first and foremost, like he mentioned, take risks. Um, do things, try things, don't be afraid to get involved, like Peter said, um, in your first year especially try everything so that you can know exactly what it is that you want to do when you get out of here. Um, Cause you don't want to leave this place with regrets on like, Oh, like, what if I had tried this and got into this, you don't want to have those thoughts. So take risks and try everything. Furthermore, I would say don't get lost in kind of the whole business school recruitment thing. Yes. It's important, 
and you need to kind of keep that on the back burner of your mind at all times like, like hey like getting a job is kind of my final motive here that kind of thing unless you're planning on going to grad school which is a different story which means get your grades up but outside of all of that the whole school thing the whole job thing ensure that you're also having fun like at the end of the day this is still your university experience and whether or not you choose to go to grad school or, or further education in the future this might be your last four years um, going to school with your friends and, and, and being this young right so take this chance to, to still have fun make sure you manage your time properly so that you can balance your life because it's easy to burn out um, in, in this school you know working you know, working maybe part-time or doing school and all those things in between it can really catch up to you so make sure that you're taking time for yourself um, so that you can enjoy your life you know enjoy being 18 19 20 and so on and and doing things with your friends and making sure that you're not spending all of your time thinking about work and school all the time uh, because these four years will pass you by quickly. Uh, um, I can't believe myself that I'm heading into my final year at Shulik. I still remember joining our orientation Zoom call in our first year because we were online um, and it feels like it was just yesterday. Um, so make sure that you're making the most of your time here and don't forget that you know there is life outside of just work and school and make sure to take advantage of that. Gotcha. Yeah, I think um, all the advice that both of you gave in this uh, podcast today is really helpful. And even if, even for someone who might not be going into first year or who might be going into another different business school and might be aiming for finance, they can definitely apply the knowledge that they learned today from this podcast in general. Uh, I'd like to, again, thank you for both of your time today. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And if anyone out there who's watching this like needs assistance, guidance, or is just looking to chat or ask a question, we're always open on LinkedIn. You can just reach out.